So summer's arrived and I thought it would be a good opportunity to do some playful technology outdoors. So here I am in the garden and as everyone knows what you get at the bottom of the garden is fairies or at the bottom of my garden I have water sprites, playful little water nymphs that jump around the garden and that's what I'm going to create in this project with the help of an Arduino Uno, a four channel relay module and some windscreen washer motors like you'd get in a car. And what's going to happen is the Arduino is going to run a sketch that continuously goes through each of the channels on the relay module, briefly activating them and then deactivating them, moving on to the next one, activating, deactivating, activating, deactivating. What that is going to do in turn is energise the windscreen washer pumps to send a brief jet of water out between different locations in the garden. Um, and hopefully what you can see going on behind me at the moment is the illusion there of a water sprite jumping around. Okay so the key component I'm using in this project is one of these, or in fact two of these. These are windscreen washer motors that were sold to go in a uh, Ford Galaxy I think but they're actually a very common design um, that you can find sold for use in all sorts of makes and models of cars. And they cost about nine or ten pounds. And the way they work they're essentially 12 volt DC motors and like all DC motors what happens is when you uh, supply a voltage between the pins the motor will spin in one direction. Uh, if you reverse the polarity of that voltage, so if you change over the positive supply and the ground supply, the motor will spin in the opposite direction instead. Now, the way that these are designed, when that motor reverses direction, the effect it has is to direct water between one of two different outlets on the back here. So, there's a single water inlet on the front, that's this larger tube here, and what I've got here is I've got that connected to a length of garden hose that's going into a vase of water. And then the two different outlets on the back here, uh, what I've used is some piping here that's sold for use in um, aquariums. It's uh, an oxygen tube to go uh, in a fish tank or something like that. And I've got those directed out here. Now if I supply a positive 12 volts onto the contact on this side and ground volt, it's going to come out of this tube here. And if I switch the polarity of that supply, I can direct the water to come out of that tube there, which I will now attempt to demonstrate. So if I just plug this in. Oh. So I've pointed them in different directions. Oh, that scared the dog. Okay, so I've pointed them in different directions, so hopefully you can uh, see that it is going between them. And what's happening, this is hap uh, an Arduino is running the same sketch that you saw running earlier, that's cycling through the relay channels in order. And what it's doing is it's switching the uh, contacts that are going to this so that it, um, it's switching to ground and to positive to start with and then it's switching the ground to positive and the positive to ground effectively reversing the polarity and the effect is that you can use a single pump like this to actually direct water to come from two different sources that's why I only needed two pumps uh, to have the effect earlier where I have four different um, starting points the water jets um, but I'll explain that more in the following wire, the drawing diagram. So uh, let's first of all look at the input side of the relay. So this is the Arduino control into the relay channels here. So this is a four relay module, so it has four signal wires which are going into the A0, A1, A2 and A3 pins on the Arduino here. Um, so the first point to note there is obviously these are labelled as analog input pins and they can be used as analog inputs. Um, they can also be used just as all the GPIO pins on the Arduino as digital outs. So all I'm writing is a, a, an on or an off or a high or low signal to these pins to activate the relay. I'm not making use of the fact that they have an analog input, it's just that they're on the right side of the board um, to connect neatly because I'm using the fire on ground. So that's why. So don't get confused, just because it says analog here, I'm not using analog signals here, I'm sending a digital output, um, but these pins could have been used for analog instead. Uh, I'm also connecting the relay module to the 5 volt power supply and to ground. So uh, the next point to notice here then is about the power requirements because relays are electrical switches 
and there's a couple of different important points to note about uh, sort of the different power ratings and things like that. So these relays here, according to the data sheet, draw around 70 milliamps of current. Okay. Now, a uh, GPIO pin, so one of these pins here on Arduino, can only safely supply about 40 milliamps of current. So this pin on its own cannot... Uh, safely directly energize the magnets that are required in the relay to close the switch on this side. But they don't need to because what's actually happening instead is that these are being powered by this 5 volt supply here. That's capable of producing 500 milliamps, so uh, plenty enough current to power all of the relays. The signal lines here are actually only being used to control transistors on the circuit that are going to turn the relays on or off. And they require much, much less current. So it's a little bit tricky because there's sort of several layers of abstraction of what's going on here. We've got a pin here connected to the input here. Well, we've got four, four of them, in fact, which are controlling four separate transistors. They are then... Uh, when they are turned on, they are letting the 5 volt supply from the Arduino energize the uh, coils inside the relay. And then when those are energized, what they allow uh, to happen is for this switch to switch between the normally open and the normally closed position. And that allows power to run on this side of the circuit. So it is a little bit uh, tricky to get your head around all the different um, sort of things that are going on there but so this is only carrying a signal down this line so very very small uh, current drawn here the 5 volt supply here is to actually uh, energize the magnetic coils on the relays themselves and then when that happens that closes a circuit that can allow um, current flow on the load side of the relay so what's going on here because this also looks a little bit um, complicated what's going on here so I've got a 12 volt DC supply coming in from the top through this DC barrel connector. And that is going to the outside terminals of the first relay block. So to the normally open and to the normally closed on the first one. And then from there you'll see that the, all of the subsequent relay channels are kind of daisy chained off that first one. So the top connector of every relay module here uh, every relay sorry is connected to ground and that will be the case whether any of those individual relays are open or closed the top terminal will always be ground and the bottom terminal so this is the bottom terminal of the first relay this is the bottom terminal of the second relay they are daisy chained all together to always be connected to positive 12 volts dc and that will be the case also whether any of the individual relays are open or closed. This bottom connector will always be at 12 volts positive DC. And then into the common pin, so the central pin of each relay, what I've got is I've got for the top two relays, I've got the two wires that are going to uh, this windscreen washer. And the bottom two relays... I've got connected to this second windscreen washer. But let's just concentrate on the first one to start with because they work exactly the same way. So imagine here if the, let's first of all say that all of the um, relays are off. So all of the relays are pointing to the normally closed position. Okay. Now when that's the case, uh, what's going to happen is that the voltage reading across all the modules, uh, or across all the relays, is going to be the same because they're all pointing to positive 12 volts. Remember, voltage is a difference in electric potential. So if you're supplying positive 12 volts to both of these lines, there is no difference in electric potential. There's no voltage, uh, so no current will flow. If I then switch just one of those relays on, what will happen is that this one will still be pointing at 12 volts, let's say. This one is now pointing to ground because the contact inside has flipped across and this common pin here is now connected to this pin here. So I've got a ground and a positive 12 volts and 12 volts is uh, going to create a current flowing through this windscreen washer in a certain direction. Now let's turn this one 
off again, so it's back to 12 volts, nothing blows, and we energise this relay instead. This flicks the common connector over to ground, and now I've got 12 volt to ground before I had ground to 12 volts, so I've created a current flowing in the opposite direction. So that's just looking at the top two. Exactly the same thing happens again with the third and fourth relay. So I'm basically treating them in pairs. This four relay module, if you think of it actually as two pairs of two relays, when they're both set to on or when they're both set to off, no current flows because there's no difference in electric potential going down these wires. They're either both at ground or they're both at plus 12 volts. So nothing's going to happen. When only one of them is energised and the other one is not, uh, what's going to happen is, depending on, on which one is energised and which one's not, one of them is ground, one of them is plus 12 volts, that's going to create the current flow, and that will ultimately say, like, turn the DC motor inside the pump one way or the other, and that is going to create uh, water to be pushed either through the black connector or through the white connector at the back. And this same technique here you could also use for let's say a linear actuator that you wanted to be able to raise up and down. It's the same idea again. Um, what you do is if you wire your relays like this, so a two channel relay wired to, uh, wired to a linear actuator, if you set one of the relays to energise and the other not, the linear actuator will rise. And then if you turn this one off and turn the other one on instead, the linear actuator will contract. Okay, so here's the Arduino code. So as always, we start off with defining some constants. So these are values that are not going to change throughout the duration of the sketch. And the first one is to define the pins which are connected to each of the signal lines on the relay. So as I mentioned, I'm using the analog pins, uh, A0 to A3. You'll notice I've defined them in a slightly funny order there. I've gone A2, A3, A1, A0. Um, that's simply because when I uh, actually started to connect the pumps and I'd lay them out in the garden, and then I decided that this actually gave the nicest uh, order for them to activate in. Um, so this is a, an array that's just going to step through these pins in sequence and set them off in that order. Um, so you can define the pins in the order here that you want them to be uh, fired in. And then in terms of the actual kind of sprites jumping around themselves, there's kind of two different uh, periods of time to think about. So the first day, uh, each relay is going to be activated for this duration period here. So this is 300 milliseconds or three tenths of a second. So that's how long they're going to be uh, turned on for, which is going to activate the pump and send uh, a jet of water. So setting this to a larger value, you're going to get a longer stream of water. But then the next one in the sequence doesn't fire straight away. What we're then going to do is have a bit of a delay before the next one, um, just to give it sort of chance for the, the first one to go through the air and land and things like that. There's nothing special about these values here. These were just set empirically from me trying out different things until I found something which I thought looked nice. So, uh, so we're going to start. So what's going to happen first of all? So the relay attached to A2, that's going to be turned on for 300 milliseconds. And then it's going to be turned off and we're going to wait uh, just over a second, so 1200 milliseconds. And then this one is going to be turned on for 300 milliseconds. And then after that, there's going to be a delay again of 1200 milliseconds. And then this one for 300 milliseconds, a delay. And finally, we'll get to the last one, which will be activated for 300 milliseconds and then a delay. And then when we get to the end of the sequence, uh, actually, what's going to happen here is I've defined another value. This is six seconds, 6,000 milliseconds. And if it gets to be that long since the last time we started a sequence, it's going to start the next sequence from the beginning again and step all the way through just as before. So um, if you wanted this to sort of run continuously, um, you could sort of set this to just be equal to the length of time it took to go through all the way. Sometimes you might want to have a bit of a gap just to make it slightly more interesting. You could even uh, add a, uh, use the math random function here to choose a slightly random length of time delay before it started again, just to make it a little bit more organic. But for now, I said every six seconds, we're going to start a new sequence that's going to step through those in turn. And there's a total of uh, four jumps or four relays involved. Um, I'm going to use that as a, a counter in some of the loops used later on. 
Okay, in the global section, we're going to keep track of the last activation time. So this is a, a count in milliseconds of when the last time the sequence was began from A2. Okay. Uh, the setup function is nice and simple. All we do is simply go through each of those relay pins, so the number of jumps. We'll set all of the relay pins to output and we'll initially set them with a low signal. That's what's going to be changed to high when they're sent to pulse. And then we get on to the loop itself. So in each step through the loop, the first thing we'll do is record the current length of time that the sketch has been running for. And we get that from the millis function here. And then what we do is we compare that to the last time uh, the sequence of uh, real activations was started. And that will tell us how long has elapsed in the current sequence of, um, of water jet sprays. Okay? Uh, if that time has been more than the, uh, the time interval that we said that each time it appears, we'll start again from the beginning. So remember that's, that's 6,000 millisecond value. So if it's been more than six seconds since the last time we started the sequence, we're going to start the sequence again at the beginning and we'll set the last activation time to be now. And then all that's left is this uh, loop here. And this is a little bit sort of complicated to get your head around. So it's, it's not actually difficult what it's achieving, but the way it's written can be slightly difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to... What we're trying to find out is uh, obviously which relay needs to be on at the moment, given where we are uh, in the sequence, how much time has elapsed in the sequence. Okay, So we're going to loop over all of the jumps, all of the relays in turn. And then we're going to try to find the relay that should be firing at the moment. So if the amount of time that has elapsed so far is greater than uh, the length of time that we wait in between the jumps times i. Now i is uh, this counter here. Remember this i starts at zero. Um, so in the first relay that we're looking at, this value is actually always going to be equal to zero because it's multiplied by zero. And also, if the elapsed sequence time is less than the interval between jumps times that factor plus the activation duration, so how long we want the relay to be going on for. So this will be true for the i of the relay that is meant to be firing at the moment. That is the only value that is going to make this true. And if that's the case, what we're going to do is we're going to write a high value to that relay. In all other cases, we're going to write a low value to the relay. So, um, like I said, it's a, it's a little bit too tricky sometimes to get your head around that, but, but that's because each uh, step in the sequence is formed from these two different periods of time. There's the period that it's uh, going to be active for, and the period that it's then going to be a delay before the next one. And all this if condition here does is to identify which relay we're currently in the activation duration period of and for that relay and that relay alone we set it to high for all other relays we set to low and that's it really um so that's all there is i can uh, say about this project really other than um obviously you could use it for you could use the windscreen washer pumps uh, for any other project that you wanted to make sort of water controlled uh, water feature fountains things like that outside a lot of fun to play with um, and in terms of the relay control itself, you could also use that to control uh, motors or linear actuators or other things that you want to have a bi-directional control, uh, which you can get just by flipping the ground and the positive voltage supply over using two channels of relay. Uh, so I hope you found that interesting and helpful. Or Thanks very much for watching. And don't forget to ask if you have any comments or questions below. Okay, cheers.